must take its course. Nobody is above the law. Martin, nobody is above the law, and that is the position of the ESCC chairman as Ibrahim Maguin sees a failed attempt to arrest the NIA boss. Okay, is not the end to the saga. Plus, the president wants to audit the recovered loots. An APC national leader, Bola Tunubu, insists there is no automatic ticket for President Muhammadu Buhari in 2019. He says the president will go through the party's due process. And thanks for joining everyone. This is Politics City Live on Channel's television. I'm Sean Okimale in Lagos. Well, Governor Willie Obiano of Anambra State has picked up his return certificate. The governor received the certificate of return at the state headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Orca, the Anambra State capital, after the landslide victory on Saturday's governorship election. The re-elected governor assured the people of Anambra State that the confidence they repose in him through his re-election will not be betrayed. Consultations and visits are not new in politics. The purpose is what sometimes could be left to those who want to guess. Today, River State Governor Yin Sam Wike paid a courtesy visit to the former head of state, General Ibrahim Babangida. The reasons why Governor Wike visited General Babangida's uh, country home in Mina may not be heard to figure out. They belong to the same political party, and that party is a PDP, and are trying its uh, best to regain a stature in Nigerian politics. One way the party hopes to achieve that is by electing a national chairman come December 9 this year. The governor has shown strong interest in who takes that position. As a matter of fact, is rooting for one of the candidates, and his visit to General uh, Babangida may not be unconnected to that. Yeah, talking about 2019 now. Yesterday, Governor Rocha Zokorocha of Imo State said the president is enjoying a strong support from many APC leaders. The president has also been endorsed by governors from the opposition party, which is a boost going into the next general election. But today, the party's national leader, Bala Ahmed Tinubu, said President Buhari will definitely go through the party's due process to end 2019 ticket for his re-election. Listen to him. Buhari will want a normal process. The Buhari that I know. Who says he will lose any, at any convention? But if the national body of the party, the NEC, and all of force as members, I will now go out together. Eh? and endorse him as our single candidate. We will not be violating INEC regulations. We will not be violating our own constitution. What you are hearing from anybody is a campaign. Well then, Bola Tinobu, leader of the APC, we will all see how this plays out talking about the fact that zoning is one major issue. Will that be followed in the APC? Will the president be given a ticket to run again on the platform of the APC? It may look, look like it's uh, two years away, but we'll wait for all that to happen. The Oba of Benin Kingdom, who for the first time after his coronation leaves the comfort of his kingdom on a thank you visit to the federal government for the role it played during his coronation. The Oba of Benin was given a warm welcome by the entire federal cabinet led by President Muhammadu Buhari. In his speech to the president, the Benin monarch Omonoba Nedu Ukuwa Polopolo Oba Ewai II tax President Muhammadu Buhari led federal government to step up efforts at providing basic infrastructures in the state as it is one of the viable means of stimulating economic activities for the people of Edo State. The Obor of Benin also charges President Muhammadu Buhari to complement the effort of Governor 
or Baseki of Edo State by providing adequate security to the people of the state. In his response, President Muhammad Buhari assures the Benin monarch and indeed the people of Edo State of federal government's presence. Obaye II II assures the federal government of his commitment towards repositioning Community Development Association in Edo State. Joseph Kadri, ITV News, Abuja. Well, Nigerians should make sacrifices to ensure that the country does not disintegrate. This is former President Goodluck Jonathan's message to the political class and youths of the country on the occasion of his 60th birthday, where he thanks President Muhammad Buhari former Vice President Abubakar Atiku and also by Yelso State Governor Siraki Dixon for felicitating with him. Oviatime George has the details. Nobody's ambition is what the blood of any Nigerian. Good luck, Jonathan's famous address to Nigerians before the 2015 presidential elections. Two years after, Jonathan still holds fast to that philosophy which endears many Nigerians to him as the father of modern democracy in the country. It was a cheerful yet humble Jonathan who played host to visitors on the occasion of his 60th birthday at his country home in Otueke. I have to thank my governor for being here. Let me also thank Mr. President, President Buari, also, former Vice President Atiku also issued a statement wishing me well because the APC, the ruling party, and my own party, the number one opposition party, the PDP, also issued statements wishing me well. And so many other senior Nigerians that have sent texts to me, all the former presidents and others. So let me use this unique opportunity that you have with me to thank all of them. I will find a way to communicate to them my appreciation. I'm happy that a uh, number of people uh, gathered to uh, make it seem like a celebration, but I know it's not uh, uh, a birthday celebration planned by him, but it's a happy gathering. Even at this age, he has done, uh, virtually occupied all the offices in the state and uh, across the country. So, um, lived a very remarkable life, uh, a very remarkable life. Uh, but so we are here to felicitate with him, to congratulate him, and to also on this special day appreciate him for what uh, he has been able to, to achieve so far. At the surprise birthday celebration organized for him, Nigeria's former president talked about the unity of the country and called on the political class to play sacrificial roles. I believe that if I made a little effort that this country didn't disintegrate in 2015 elections. I believe so many Nigerians can do the same in one way or the other. All doesn't have to be with elections. My own is unique because I had that privilege of being a sitting president to contest elections. But there are so many other ways people will make sacrifices for the growth of society so that we can progress as individuals, as a as communities, as a nation, from one level to the other. Ovietime George, TVC News, Otueke, Bayelso State.
We are I on the side of the prosecution. We are able ready to go on with the, the case today. Case are joint tonight till the fifth of um, November. Today we are here in court for the shortest to explain to the court actually where he is, and you are also aware by virtue of what transpired in this court, our last adjourned date being 17th of December, eh, uh, November, that I don't think that much will happen had it been the court even sit. So because of the fact that um, the court reserved the ruling on our application, asking the military to produce him in court. So and the, until when that ruling is delivered, then we will not know what will happen next. In the proceedings, because uh, when we are saying that the military invaded his house, we supply court, they will supply the court with the material evidence and the documents to show that they actually invaded his house, killed people, and arrested him. And at the time they invaded his premises and his home, he was in the house and alerted me about the, the onslaught, which I also quickly um, uh, issued a statement to that effect on the 14th day of uh, September 2017. So we have documents to show to the court that look, this will enter his house on 14th of September 2017. And since then, we've not heard from him. We've not, we've not established any form of contact with him. So, and the uh, military as we are away, they, they came here on a fishing expedition uh, because uh, they were telling the court that on the 14th day of uh, September 2017 that uh, they intercepted a, a, a trolley load of uh, arms and ammunition and gave the trolley, the truck a, a hot chase. Eventually ended up in a home they later discovered to be in the Kano's home. That is a fairy tale, we told the court. About 20 people were killed and several others injured in fresh attacks between farmers and herdsmen in Newman local government area of Adamawa State. The attack was said to have occurred on Monday night as a result of the killing of a farmer by suspected herdsmen, resulting in a reprisal attack by the farming communities of Shoforon, Kodum T and Kikan, all in Newman local government area of Adamawa State. We have confirmed that those affected fled their communities following rumors of alleged reprisals and are taking refuge at the Newman General Hospital. How much more of the killings will continue unabated? Are the measures taken by some states to stop open grazing working? We're going to focus on that in just a moment. Data feeds are coming through in one place simultaneously on all our social media platforms, channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can follow us right now on m.channelstv.com and on Facebook as well. We've got all our platforms on social media covered. Be part of the show. Tweet at Gimba Omar CTV. Use the hashtag State of the Nation to air your thoughts on the subject. The ECOWAS court has adjourned the case involving the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB Namdi Kanu, and the federal government. The self-acclaimed IPOB leader had filed a suit requesting $800,000 as compensation from the government for allegedly infringing on his human rights. The counsel to Namdi Kanu informed the ECOWAS court that the motion was filed as a deliberate attempt to frustrate the trial because the government had more than one month to file the motion but failed to do so. The hearing of the suits was subsequently adjourned to February 8, 2018. Is this yet another painstaking delayed treason court case? Will it end in the manner of the Masab leader Ralph Wazirike? The federal government has condemned the burial of 26 girls found dead in the Mediterranean Sea and demanded explanation from the Italian government. The senior special assistant to the president of foreign affairs and diaspora, Mrs. Abike Dabari Erawa, says that the girls were sold as slaves. And this is something that should be unaccepted to the whole world. We'll also examine that developing story as well. It's prime time in Lagos, and this is State of the Nation. everyone in Nigeria and the rest of the world. I am Gimba Omar and this is State of the Nation. Right behind me, data feeds are still coming through on all our social media platforms in one place simultaneously. Be part of the show. Tweet at Gimba Omar CTV and use the hashtag State of the Nation. We have informed, inform we've got uh, uh, breaking news that the 
Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe has indeed bowed out and he has resigned. Uh, we understand that uh, uh, after so much pressure and moves to get him impeached by members in that country, uh, Robert Mugabe, who is 83 at the moment, has finally resigned from office. That will be 93 years old. He has actually resigned from office. That's the breaking news that we're following at this time. We're going to keep tabs on that story, but uh, just before then, after concerted efforts to improve security at all levels of government, it has happened again. About 20 people were killed and several others injured in fresh attacks between farmers and herdsmen in Newman, Adamawa State. And this is coming on the heels of the controversial anti-open grazing laws in effect in Benway State, with Taraba State also looking at that possibility of adopting same fully. While that is ongoing, tragedy struck in Newman, Adamawa State. Let's get a better understanding of this. Oladende Ario is a security expert. He joins me in the studio. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on thank State of the Nation much. at this time. This is happening just so uh, unexpectedly, I would say, because uh, we thought that after seeing the cases of Bainway State enacting that law on the 1st of November that uh, prohibits open grazing, mm -hmm. and then we saw the Nassau state government, on the other hand, says that perhaps this is not the way to go because some of the grey areas were still hanging. What was your impression when you heard well, about I, this, I, this attack? I knew that this uh, it was a time bomb waiting to explode. Um, impunity has been brought to bear on all of these things. And I say impunity more on the part of the, the cartoon men. Adama Osbandri is a private business, and that's my own position at all times. To that extent, your business stops being legal or legitimate at the point where it destroys my own means of livelihood. I have seen classic cases in the Edo State where somebody brought in funds from the U.S., set up a farm and planted plantain. He had a huge plantain by the plantation. And in just two weeks, these people were there they invaded the farm and destroyed everything. Not one stem was standing. Now, if the state comes to my mind, they've had the law banning open grazing. Have you had any news from there lately? No. Unfortunately, again, I read one of the uh, hand, I mean, the, the leaders of Bieti Allah threatening that they either allow them to do their business or, or the country we born. No, they, they, I, I believe they didn't threaten. They were all, only asking that some of those gray areas be cleared first before uh, any the, grazing the, law comes in, you come, see, comes in effect. The, the point remains that all over the world, people manage animals. And we've not had uh, unending cases or clashes between the locals and the headsmen. Why is our own difference? It's different because the people who own those cattle, okay, they're the ones arming their herdsmen against the local community. Otherwise, we keep, we keep saying these things. What's a husband doing with AK-47? So what, what, what would you recommend as the best way to approach in getting these killings to stop once and for all? You remember the federal government said they had I mean, imported some uh, special grass or something? Uh, that they will plant somewhere and keep them in a particular location. Okay? I also remember when they came and said that the desertification is the reason why they have to migrate southwards. But the question remains, if you must migrate, the interests of the people, the indigenous, the farmers, should it not be taken into consideration? Must your own uh, business come over and then destroy their means of livelihood? People borrowed money to invest in farms. What do you think about the, um, the transgrading route that cuts across Nigeria? Well, it's been, it's been there over the time. Should we close it? We cannot just close it like that, because we all eat meat, OK? We all enjoy these things. I would prefer a situation whereby uh, a more pragmatic approach, OK, can be brought in. Unfortunately, we cannot blame Benoit government for taking the action that they took, because they've had to carry so much burden. They lost people, they lost investments, they lost farms, and 
the governor was made to look bad and weak. Okay, so closing is not a solution, but they, they should be made to know that they must to, to, to the authority of the local people. One number two, they must. I mean, they, they should not take the animals to farms. I mean, they can go into the thick forest or wherever, but not to farmlands that are purposely cultivated. That's destructive. Now, this, this particular one uh, that happened in Adamal State has to do with reprisal uh, attacks, we hear. And then they staged this uh, early morning attack when the, uh, the Muslims were still having their, uh, their morning it's prayers. Mosque, We've yeah. also had this kind of scenario in just the Plateau State right. capital in Riom, to be precise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've also had it in Mangu, all were reprisal yeah, yes. attacks. So it seems to be one... Uh, recurring this, yeah, it's recurring and it seems to be, uh, you hit me, I hit you twice. How then do we begin to approach this? If the state governments on their own are enacting laws that prohibit open grazing, mm -hmm. what should the federal government be doing? Well, as the big brother, I would rather, well, I was against federal government uh, spearheading the version of grass initially. But when I looked at it and I said, if that will bring peace, so be it. Okay? I would rather federal government steps in, identify more areas in different parts of Nigeria, okay, and ensure that um, grasses are planted purposely for grazing, and of course, get the herdsmen to know that they cannot just uh, invade those farms. For as long as they do that, we will continue to have attacks and reprisal attacks. There was one that happened, I can't remember now, in Portisco, that they invaded a market and killed people yeah. senselessly.